hey guys, we're going to do notes for 130, 131, and 137. All right. So question number, or page 130, it says, one of the most powerful skills we learn in stats is the ability to answer a question about a population characteristic based on information we gathered from a sample. So that's what we've been talking about is essentially that's what stats is all about. That is, we can use a statistic that we calculate to make a conclusion about the whole population. However, we must note that the statistic we calculate from a sample may differ somewhat from the population characteristic. Further, the stat would likely differ from sample to sample. This sample to sample variability poses a problem when we try to generalize our findings to the population. However, based on what we learned in the last chapter, we can view a sample statistic as a random variable. That is, while we have no way of predicting exactly why, what statistic value we'll get from a sample, we know how these values will behave in repeated random sampling. With probability distribution of this random variable in mind, we can use a sample statistic to estimate a population parameter. So I'm gonna give an example. Um, if I wanted to know the average age of the 1,400 kids in school, right, but I'm too lazy to ask all 1,400 kids, I can just take a sample of, let's say, 20 classrooms. One, two, three, you know, I, I just asked 20 teachers to take a sample from their classrooms. And then if I averaged all those together, maybe the average age is 15.95. And then I could I could do another sample of 20 classrooms. I asked 20 teachers, please ask everyone in your class, what is the average age? And maybe somebody will give me a sample 16.86. That's the average age of the samples, the average of the samples. And if we kept doing this, notice that we could think of these as random variables. And therefore, we know that these samples might not be exactly the average age of all 1,400 students, meaning if I added up all 1,400 students' ages, and then we divided by the number 1,400, maybe we would get a number 15, 15 point. Nine, nine. Notice that these samples are something close to it. And we know the way random, uh, a random variable works that if in fact this was the truth, I'm going to get samples that are a little bit above, a little bit below, and right on the money. And every once in a while, I'll get a really young class or a really old class, but I probably won't get an average of 20 classes to be really big or really small because each of these numbers are an average of an average. Make sense? I hope so. Okay, so it says, for each of the following situations, identify the population of interest and the parameter of the statistics. So it says, medical research is interested in exploring the effects of a new medicine on blood pressure. 500 males with high blood pressure are randomly selected and given a new drug. After two weeks, their blood pressure is measured. So their blood pressure is measured and we find their average arterial pressure is calculated. So I need to identify what is the population I'm interested in making an inference about? What is the parameter, which is what is the number? Parameter means what's the number that describes the population? And the statistic is what is the number that describes the sample? And why am I doing this? I'm doing this because this number should be somewhere close to this number. This number is easier, quicker, probably less expensive to find. And this number would take a lot more time and money. So in this situation, my population, my parameter, and my statistic, Population is, what do I want to make an inference about? Well, I'm interested in all males with high blood pressure, right? So, who did I ask? I asked 500 of them. I asked a sample of the people I'm interested in making an inference about. So, my statistic 
is what's my number, right? My number is my sample mean. And what is my sample? It's, they called it the arterial, arterial pressure. The sample arterial pressure of those 500 people that I talked to. Right? So what's my parameter? Well, I'm actually interested in knowing what number. I'm interested in finding out the mean arterial pressure. So this would be my mu. And again, this sample mean would be my X bar, right? This mean arterial pressure for all males with high blood pressure. So we normally wouldn't have to write these out. We'd see these types of questions in multiple choice, but we have to know what it is we're setting up, what it is we're asking, and how it is we're taking a sample to go about to make an inference about what we're asking. Question number two, a study is conducted to determine whether or not the dangerous activity of texting while driving is common. In 1500, so that's my sample, right? In 1500 um, people, 16 to 24, that were randomly selected, they were asked whether or not they text while driving. Of the 1500, 12% indicated they're texting. So this is an example of quantitative Right? And this is categorical. So this is when we ask a yes or no question. So in the same setting, we're going to have a population, a parameter, and a statistic. And my parameter is the number that describes my population, and my statistic is the number that describes my sample. So in my statistic, this number, 12% is the proportion, that's my statistic, it's my proportion of the 1,500 drivers who texted while driving. Okay. So what is my parameter? So we can think of this as my P hat, right? What's my parameter? That's my P. That's my proportion. Of all 16 to 24 year old drivers who text while driving. And what's my population? Well, I'm interested in making an inference about all drivers in that age range. Nice. All right, so page 131, it says to draw a conclusion about the population proportion, we take a random sample and calculate the sample proportion. Likewise, to reach a conclusion about the population mean, we take a sample and get a sample mean. This is what we spoke about in class. Because of chance variation, the population, the random sampling, the values of our sample statistic will vary from sample to sample. The distribution of those statistic values are in all possible samples from the same size would be called the sampling distribution. The sampling distribution describes the sampling variability provided by the foundation for performing inference. The variability of the sampling distribution is important to attribute as all inference calculations depend on it. While trying to estimate a parameter, we want to minimize or we want the minimum sampling variability and no bias. Random sampling helps us avoid bias while larger samples help us minimize, minimize sampling variability. Okay. So we notice in the Beyonce sample that if we didn't do randomization properly, then we ended up getting bias. And if we don't take large enough samples, we have too much variability. Okay, those are the activities we recognized. 
So in this example, a breakfast cereal including marshmallow shapes and maybe Lucky Charms, right? We end up getting 10% stars, 10% um, crescent moons, 20% rockets, 40% um, astronauts, and 20% planets. So notice this is categorical data. We have to ask, are you a star, yes or no? Are you a crescent moon, yes or no? So this is um, my proportion. Okay, so stars are 10%, crescents 10, rockets 20, astronauts 40, planets 20. Sketch a population distribution of the marshmallow shapes. So this is my population distribution. That's all the shapes that the company makes. That's the distribution. Suppose you were to collect a random sample of 2,000. And again, that's our sample. Sketch the distribution of the sample data we would expect. So it might not be exact, but what is 20% of 2,000, right? What is 10% of 2,000? What is 40% of 2,000? Well, of is just multiply, so we just multiply these. Right? And 10% would be 200, and 20% would be 400, and then 40% would be 800. So my chart's gonna look Pretty much exactly the same, except stars and crescents at 10% would just be the number 200. And rockets and planets that were at 20% are now 400. And astronauts would be 800. So, and we wouldn't expect maybe exactly, but somewhere close. So again, the astronauts would maybe be 799, 758, you know, something close to that, but I'm expecting to see the same shape, whatever shape, it's hard to say shape now with categorical data, it's not uniform. Um, I'm expecting to see something close to that. So this is stars, crescent moons, rockets, astronauts, and planets. This is not my population distribution now, this is my sample of 2000, right? Now suppose we collect many samples of the same size. Sketch a sampling distribution of rockets we expect to see. Okay, so we know that rockets, we're expecting 20%. So if I took many, many samples of rockets, um, let's say I asked each student in class to take a sample and just count the rockets, many, many students are gonna get exactly 20%. Some students might get like 18%, um, some students might get 22%. And again, this is similar to if I asked to flip a coin 100 times. Many students are gonna get 50 heads, Many students are gonna get 48 heads. Some students are gonna get 55 heads. You get the point. We're assuming that this would be uh, relatively symmetrical. It says, um, sketch a sampling distribution. And then depending on the size, I don't know the size of it, depending on the size of it, that's gonna control how many dots. But I know that this, my samples, and instead of saying mu x bar, because I'm not doing a sample mean, I'm gonna say mu p hat, I'm expecting it to be 20%, right? 
And I can actually say what my sampling dis, uh, deviation would be if I look at the. Oh, I don't. I don't have it in what I scanned, but I have it. I have it in my notes here. If I look at my formulas, I'm not sure I have this. It says um, I. I can predict that my sampling distribution. So the standard deviation of my sampling distribution would be the proportion, one minus the proportion over n, however big my sample size is. So if my sample size, if I stuck with a sample size of 2,000, then I'm expecting 20%, one minus 20% is 80% over 2,000, and I get the answer 0 0.009. So I actually expect very little fluctuation because this n is very, very, very large. Check out the next video for page 137.